Welcome, everybody. Um, today we have um, Marquis Scott, who is a Director of Employer Engagement and Internships at GCU, and his colleague, Brianna Stewart, an Employer Engagement Specialist. Um, and they are going to be talking today about outreach and engagement. So um, please take it away. Thanks, Ariel, and good morning, everyone. Uh, and thank you to Amanda and the entire um, Arizona Statewide Conference Planning Team for giving us this opportunity to present this morning. And I hope that we share some things that are a blessing to our friends and peers throughout Arizona and uh, to any visitors that might be joining us today as well. Um, like many others here at Grand Canyon University, we've been working through uh, the new normal with inquisitive thought and prepared unknowns. We are seeking to uh, do what's best for our students and their families, uh, our faculty and staff. Uh, we handle these moments with a smile, um, mostly because our goal is still the same. Uh, we're still doing what we can um, to help develop some of the best leaders for tomorrow, and um, we're looking for great things to happen. I am probably the least technical person in our department, so hopefully we won't have any technical challenges, but as we get started this morning, I just want to uh, be able to make sure we're showing um, our best. And so let's get started here. Ariel's here to help if uh, things get frozen on us, so um, understand that that's the case. The title of this session is Reducing the Distance and Outreach uh, through reducing the distance and outreach and engagement. We're focusing on partnering with the industry for our students' success. Uh, the department I work for here at GCU is uh, one half of a larger department that's called the Strategic Employer Initiatives and Internships Department. Our executive director and leader is Haley Fogerly. And the other side of our team, the recruitment services team is led by Aisha Bell and her team of uh, Bianca and Ruben. Uh, today, um, uh, my department, uh, Alexa Winnett is our program manager, Michaela Itsidi is our pro project specialist, Brianna, who's here with me today, is our engagement specialist, and I support them as the director of the team, and our focus is a simple one. Uh, we connect with as many employers as possible to cultivate relationships that are mutually beneficial and that help the employers provide opportunities for our students to acquire experiences and launch their careers. And so today, although our entire team put this presentation together, it's just Brianna and I, uh, Michaela and Alexa have some other responsibilities, but we wanted to make sure you guys are aware uh, of the team and how we get things done uh, based upon that. This is sort of just a brief uh, outlook of some of the things we want to be able to share with you today, uh, going through reviewing some of our historical strategies, uh, adjusting to change, surveying the landscape, uh, what the virtual community was all about, uh, expanding the brand of GCU and the things that we do. And then we'll conclude with um, some questions of who we are, and on what we're doing and trying to give you guys some answers to what's taking place. Grand Canyon University, like many of our peer educational institutions, has um, a rich, rich history uh, in graduating qualified students um, in education and nursing and business and in other areas. Like many of you, we had a career services department um, and that department gave us an opportunity to meet the needs in a lot of different ways. Uh, we helped our students with resume writing. We helped them with how to do a proper handshake. Uh, we helped them with interviewing skills and how to search for opportunities and to do the things that they needed to do. We did this throughout our campus in very unique ways. We um, did what we could to bring students out. We gave them a rewards and awards for their participation in the many different things uh, that we did. We got, on, got out on campus and made things available to them uh, such that they wanted to be able to do different things. 
we had ice cream socials and internships and talked about what those things could do uh, to help them be uh, more successful. So we tried to come up with unique ways to engage uh, the students and to be able to do different things. And we were successful in doing that. And so as we did that and grew to know what our students were looking for, we sort of transitioned our career services department into what we call um, the Career Impact Center. And so that was a chance for us to talk a little bit more about inspiring our students, uh, motivating our students, preparing our students to apply the skills that they were learning and how they could connect with the opportunities that were being made available for them and how they might transform from being the young mind that we got at the beginning of their freshman year into this now adult going into uh, the workplace to make a difference and to be innovative and to uh, no longer be those young calves that we got as young antelopes, but growing into full-fledged antelopes go out and make a difference. Uh, we had uh, activities such as uh, companies on campus, and we just did many different things that allowed us to motivate and do what we could for the students. And so these are just some of the many different resources that came through Career Services and the Career Impact Center. It allowed us to meet the needs of our students in several different ways and uh, giving them information, uh, uh, providing them with resources, once again, getting them out or having them come out on the campuses. We had activities uh, such as companies on campus like you see here, um, where students had a chance to speak with companies and talk about what the opportunities were, how they could become more prepared for those opportunities, what was the standard that that company was looking to fulfill, what could students do to be more prepared, what could students do to make themselves more successful for those opportunities. And we still had those large career fairs that took up the center of our campus where hundreds of employers would be present, where thousands of students would be present. And so the opportunity to have a great mix, a great network in time for students to uh, engage with those they believe they wanted to work with uh, and what they wanted to be able to do. And as we interviewed with uh, those many employers and many students after such uh, large events, uh, one of the different things that we kept hearing back and forth was, hey, there was 250 employers, but I couldn't get to that one employer I really wanted to get to. Or we saw that there were thousands of students out on campus, but um, the students we were seeing just weren't the ones we were th looking for. We were looking for your engineering students, or we were looking for your accounting students, and we had a wide array of students coming uh, to meet with us. And so one of the things that we wanted to do was to figure out a way to provide uh, a better impact, to fill out a way to meet the needs of both our students and our employers and give them a chance to connect, to put the puzzle pieces together in a way that was beneficial, of course, for the students, but definitely for uh, the employers. And so that's where we came up with the idea of taking what we had as our career services department and our career impact center and splitting it in two. One half of that uh, split became the academic and career excellence center. Um, that's where Merit Hahn and her team focus on that list of things you saw in that document I showed you that were the resume writing and the interviewing skills and how to search for opportunities, how to dress for opportunities, how to get myself as a student prepared for those things. And then that other half is what the Strategic Employer Initiatives and Internships Department is all about. And that is uh, engaging employers, uh, cultivating those relationships, providing opportunities to hear from them what they wanted to do and how they wanted to do it. And so that's what we're focusing on today. And that's where uh, our department comes into play. Uh, one of the things we did, because we knew this was going to be new for our students, we created an activity called Match Mondays. And that's where our department and uh, at the SEI Strategic Employer Initiatives Department and the ACE Department came together um, after chapel on Mondays and other times throughout the day to share with students what the new opportunities were, where they could still find these resources, 
um, how we can introduce them to make, getting into our employer network we call um, Career Connections that's built on the Simplicity platform, how they could better engage in those different things to make them aware of the fact that since employers had said the massive career fairs weren't so ideal, that we were gonna to begin to have industry specific career fairs for accounting, for communications, for engineering, marketing, theology, or what have you. You name it, if it was an industry focus, we were doing the best that we could with the help of the recruitment services team to make sure that that was taking place. And so the employer engagement team that Brianna and I are a part of would secure the employers and then bring them to those events and then Ace and her team would take advantage of making sure that the events were awesome and great things were taking place. But what we didn't do is we didn't lose any momentum. Once we let the students know what was taking place, our crowd still stood, remained large. And so whether it was an accounting fair that was taking place in our arena, whether it was a sports business or marketing fair that was taking place in the courtyard of the Colangelo College of Business, uh, whether it was something that dealt with engineering and cybersecurity in one of in one of our smaller gyms. Our crowds became more focused, our crowds became more increased because now everyone knew the subject matter of the day and how things were going to uh, transpire and how things were going to work. Then 2020 happened. And as we all know, it's been a different year. And so as new challenges came about, new opportunities came about. And we learned about those opportunities by uh, sort of writing a new COVID story. And we wrote that story by uh, surveying our employers in our uh, Career Connections Network and finding out from them what they had an interest in doing, did they have any job opportunities. And from here, let me allow Brianna to share with you some of the things we learned and some of the things we were able to accomplish. Brianna. Thank you, Marquise. Um, hello, everyone. So thank you for being a part of this, um, you know, info session today. Really, we want to give you guys an understanding and thoroughly of how we shifted during this time. Um, like Marquise mentioned, we started first by surveying our employers in our network so that we could really target what opportunities would not only be beneficial for those employers, but our students. Uh, Marquise, if you could go to the next slide for me. Marquise, if you could just go to ne the next slide. Sorry, I can't, I can't drive it. The, the milestone slide, can you see it? Uh, no, it's still showing the making adjustment. I wanted to us uh, to look at the survey plan. There we go. Uh, one more, sorry, one more ahead of that one. This one? Yes, thank you. So we decided, again, what I mentioned, to start with a survey. We really wanted that survey to be targeted first and foremost. So we looked at companies that engaged in the 1920 school year first, and there was around uh, 400 plus companies that we first started gathering that information. We sent the survey in three different dates of sending. So that initial group of about 400 was sent at the you know, end of March on the 25th. Then we surveyed um, everyone else we had in the system, which was about close to 5,000 contacts um, on the 26th and 27th. While we were waiting for those survey results to come in, we started building our virtual career fair format through Simplicity uh, because we knew that we did not want us to lose the momentum like we already had discussed, and we wanted to continue to offer those opportunities for our students and the employers. As we're, we were building those fairs, we were still continuing to track the survey responses and then starting to launch the specific industry fairs and then promote that to the employers um, after we received their responses. So we'll just give you a quick high level step-by-step. -step. So again, we created those surveys actually through Career Connections, which is Simplicity's um, platform. Then we started the outreach process was following up, of course, for those surveys to then recruit as well for the career fairs. So that way at the same time, we were doing double outreach that was very strategic. 
Then we were building it and creating a training process as well. Since virtual career fairs were new for not only our department, but students and employers, we created a couple webinars and videos that we will share with you later in this presentation for the students and employers to be successful. Now from our side, we just did the employer um, virtual training that we will discuss later. And then the Academic Center of Excellence, they actually did the student training as well. Then um, we'll go into some of the analytics um, that we received from the survey. So next slide, perfect. So that initial survey sound, like I mentioned, was on the 25th. We sent it out to over um, close to almost 500 contacts. Then that second survey send um, ended up obviously having about 5,000 opens from there, which was really good. It then allowed us to see by the end of those three days that we had 200 exact responses from those employers that really wanted to continue to engage. So this um, next slide that you'll see is an example of the questions that we surveyed the employers. It might be a little blurry, but um, we really wanted to focus on finding out from them if they were still hiring immediately as the change had just happened with COVID. We also wanted to find out what was the best way that we could contact them during this time, as we knew that many employers had shifted from being in the office to working from home. And then we really wanted to also find out which virtual opportunities that we had in our wheelhouse were of interest to them. So obviously virtual career fairs was a big thing we were starting to push, but if they were still interested in posting their jobs, if they were still interested in attending info sessions or even attending workshops that we would then um, host as well. This survey again, we'll show you an example on the next slide of what it actually looked like when we sent it to the um, contacts. This is a, a little email blurb. So obviously we were you know, thanking them for their you know, participation in our current events that they had already been a part of. But then also we wanted to provide that survey link for them directly and then making sure that we had a deadline we needed to reach to make sure that we were successful on those offerings. That initial survey send the deadline was April 10th of 2020. And then from there, we started collecting those responses. On the next slide, we're gonna highlight um, a couple of the really important responses that we saw. So 205 out of 262 said that they were interested in our virtual career fairs which was huge. So we knew that our planning at that time was consistent actually with the job market and those employers. And then 17 of them also answered um, yes to ask us to help them assist them in developing their ideas. And so that is something that we're gonna now pursue as well during this time of continuing to offer the virtual career fairs. And then we also collected some more data as well that 83% of the employers were interested in still posting their jobs on our Career Connections website. So that told us that despite the changes within COVID's um, job market at that time and as they continue, um, that they're still interested in, in continuing to connect and hire our students. So that's really important for us because we noticed that right now there was 15 immediate companies that were hiring and we wanted to make sure that they were included in our virtual career fairs. So then from there, that became our new normal, of course, was we were going to go everything virtual. So we launched companies on campus into companies on Career Connections. So it highlights that company on Career Connections instead of campus. So that way it's all about that organization, that specific day of the week, and the student can then contact the employer for more information. We then launched virtual workshops as well, the virtual career fairs and information panels, which have been very successful in their own right. Um, during this time, uh, the GCU Today, which is um, GCU's own magazine as well, launched a um, post about what we were doing for the virtual career formats in April of 2020. They interviewed on this article as well various students that had participated in the career fairs and employers. And it's very um, cohesive in showing that, you know, what we're doing is making a difference in both the students and employers' lives. And then we wanted to highlight for you the fairs that we did month by month during this time of COVID. So in April, we had four career fairs that were industry specific. We had a business an education and fine arts, engineering and technology, and then a healthcare virtual career fair. Um, each of these had different students and employers attend. So that was really good for us. And then the feedback we received was that they wanted to break apart those engineering and technology fairs into individual ones and education and arts. So that was really good feedback for us. So then we launched in May, seven different virtual career fairs, all specific industries. 
Within June, we tailored it back though, however, and we did two um, all industry virtual career fairs, one on June 11th and then actually one that we're hosting tomorrow. We are seeing success in that by having multiple students attend and multiple employers of different industries to further engage at one time. And then in July, we're still going to um, move to the all industries as well. We're just changing it to all majors at the end of July. But we're also including a um, get a job in education career fair, as we do know that, you know, the school year is about to start again in August and there are many jobs needed in education. So we want to make sure that we are engaging with those employers for those students as well. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we are going to show you guys the um, how the virtual career fairs work and this video that we put together for our employers. Uh, Marquise, do you have the ability to make sure that your sound is going to play I the video? I on the computer audio, so let's take a look, and if not, let's give me a thumbs down if I need to go back out of it. Perfect. No sound. No sound? No. Let me come out of stopping share right quick. I apologize, everybody. Let me see if I can get this to work. <clears throat> it should be the option under your sound that says share computer audio or computer sound, depending on um, the application you're using. Yeah, share computer sound is chosen, so I'm not sure. Let's try this. Can you hear that audio? No? Well, let's continue on. And if I get it fixed later, we can do something else. Perfect. So um, like Mar Marquise mentioned, we did put together a lengthy process of how to navigate the virtual career fair process because it is different than our campus. So this process map here has a lot of information on it. I'm not going to highlight all of it. But the key information is that you can see on the bottom, we created a little key that each the different departments within our overall department have a hand in how the virtual career fair processes work. So with that being said, um, the beginning of the process really is important and falls on the hands of our recruitment services team. So Asia Bell, um, Bianca Shaw and Ruben. And what they do with that is they do all the logistics and planning of the fair. And then once it is ready to go and all the planning, they then send that information over to um, our Michaela on our team who does all the reporting and builds that virtual career fair on the Simplicity website. And then once that link is live, it gets sent to us for me and Marquise to reach out to all the employers in our network to recruit them per se and invite them to the fair to attend it based on usually their industry. As that comes through, we track all those registrations. We have to approve them manually because the big difference that we really um, inf infiltrated and made a, as an importance for the virtual format is they actually have to have a job already posted into Career Connections for the employer to be approved to attend the fair. Previously, like in campus fairs, they didn't have to have an active job posting. They were still able to come. But with the virtual format, since we can't track that, we really wanted it to be, yes, they are hiring right now for this position for the students. 
If they don't have an active job posting though, that's where I come in and Marquise as well and we reach out to that employer, confirm with them, hey, you know, this is for only active jobs. If you have one, please post it and then we can approve your registration. Then once that is all said and done, the virtual career fair happens, of course. During that time frame, we have both sides of our house tracking the attendance of the employers, answering questions for students as well, or if there's technical issues and making sure it runs smoothly. Post fair, we actually then do further outreach on our side and confirm with the employers how the fair went. We do a couple of surveys as well, and then move forward on recruiting for the next fair. And then with that, um, really we try to be very strategic on communicating the opportunities that are in Career Connections that again, we utilize the job postings that we have and how we've recruit those employers. But then we like to highlight those specific jobs every week for students and faculty, and we call them the trending 10 jobs. So every week we highlight 10 jobs per week that are trending, that are valid, that we usually have some partnerships with, with those organizations. And we really push those out to our students. Um, a lot of times faculty will even um, post some of those opportunities onto their specific college pages. So that way it gets even more students than just email. And then this is also available to students on their Career Connections profile. So they can go in and see each week what jobs are trending. We highlighted on this slide um, some flyers that we produce April, May, and June, one each week. So you can kind of see the differences in the jobs that we highlighted. We try to be strategic on um, the types of jobs depending on if there's a career fair that works that week or not. But right now we're really trying to get all of the jobs posted out for all of the engagement opportunities. And this is just kind of an analysis of how once we have posted those jobs out there on the trending 10, how they get viewed, how many applications come through for the students. Um, as you can see here, that top chart for um, May through April, there um, is a good engagement there of views, just not as many applications as we'd wish. But again, that all is just dependent on if the student, of course, meets the parameters of that job application. However, I really think it's really great that the views are really high so that we know that the students are seeing those flyers and then going to look at the job on Career Connections. The time frame too shows the month by month here on the bottom um, chart. So as you can see, we have um, dropped the course a little bit from February to March and then March to April. As with COVID-19, there has been less jobs that have been posted recently. However, there is still a good amount of views that are coming through there, which is great. And the number of applications is still increasing at this time. I do see a question in the chat here about how do we pick those trending 10 jobs? So how the trending 10 jobs get picked is uh, we pull a report every week to see what new jobs come through into the system. We vet it by whether they are a partner of the organization or a cur curated job posting. We don't do curated jobs because we don't have the actual contact connection. So we just pick from those contacts that we know. We then look at if there is a current career fair that aligns with the industry for that week, maybe to highlight a job. We also then have to go through each job specifically that comes up in the job posting to make sure it's valid, not only on the uh, employer's website, but also on career connections that it's not going to be um, removed for a, an end date of posting. And then we also make sure that it is for our undergraduate students. Um, we really target the undergraduate students as that is our biggest population on Career Connections and not the masters or alumni level. So we highlight only undergraduate positions. If you have more questions about that, um, we can answer that at the end of as the presentation as well. And then Marquise, I will turn it back to you about how this whole process here has taken the village of GCU. Great job, Brianna, thank you. And so one of the things that we wanted to make sure everybody understood is, is though we have a great department in the Strategic Employer Initiative Department, and though um, our partners in ACE, Academic Career Excellence Centers are great, this is a campus-wide initiative. We work with every uh, entity on our campus that we can to make sure no stone is left unturned, and that every opportunity that needs support is supported. And so we work in conjunction with the colleges and uh, the recruitment services department meets with the colleges, the employer engagement team meets with the colleges to hear what their visions are, not just for the college as a whole, but for the individual departments and the individual majors, what are those lead instructors looking for? Who are some of the employers they want 
to see us engaging with that we may not have met with yet? Who or what do they need to have brought into the classroom to further bring to life these career opportunities or an understanding of how what the students are learning in the classroom um, and how that applies to the careers that they want to have. Uh, the ACE centers, which we have multiple ACE centers throughout campus, uh, focus on freshmen, focus on colleges and majors, focus on an opportunity for even our international students to have their needs met. And so we want to make sure that we're doing those things. Um, speaking with our uh, um, uh, financial aid department, speaking with our alumni relations department, speaking with student care to make sure students aren't stressed out too far and uh, their health concerns are being addressed because we're dealing with the whole student. And so it really takes a village to make this thing work. And so one of the things we want to make sure we share with you all this morning is that you're making sure you're doing those things as well, that as much as it is a career services thing, as much as it is uh, a career focused opportunity, and for us, the Strategic Employer Initiative opportunity, it's the university, it's the college that uh, makes this thing come to life. And our families appreciate it, our parents appreciate it, and the students themselves uh, appreciate it greatly. If there's anything we can do to help you guys, we want to make sure you know that we're available to answer your questions and things. But one of the things we wanted to share too was um, take a look at reaching out to your both your students and your employers to hear what's going on with them during this unique time. What are some of the needs that they have? What are some of the initiatives and ideas that they have? How might uh, the services you provide uh, expand upon those opportunities? How might you rebrand what you're doing in such a way that now not only do they know you've always been there but they understand that you're there now even through these unique times and that you're going to continue to be there and available to them and with them to meet those desires and to meet those expectations speak with your employer network provider whether that's simplicity or handshake or whomever you might be using and find out what their new innovations are uh, we've been uh, con in contact with Simplicity on a regular basis. They're sharing with us uh, some of their innovations and how it not only will help us here in our region, but beyond the, the map of our region so that we can uh, reach out to others and make uh, the opportunities uh, that our students are looking for available to them, not just in Arizona, but beyond the state walls as well. Um, and then partner with the departments on your campuses. Partner with, the, if you're a university, partner with your various colleges. If you're a community college, partner with your various departments and make sure that you're in line with what those deans and associate deans and lead professors are looking uh, to provide. They'll give you some uh, wealth of information. They'll give you a wealth of insight as to what uh, the students need. And when you match that with what you're hearing from the employers, when you uh, match that with what the students are telling you, what their dreams and visions are. It'll give you the chance to take the skill sets that your department provides and develops and, and to be the conduit of success, to uh, be an opportunity to be that foundation that the students will launch uh, their careers from and be able to do different, um, build upon different opportunities from. And then lastly, uh, make sure you're speaking with your peers in the industry. Let's not uh, allow uh, this to be the only time that we communicate with one another to talk about best practices, to discuss how we can all make things better for the students whose lives we have an impact on because we wanna make sure that what we're doing is providing for society a great new crop of successes, success stories and testimonies uh, that will be a blessing uh, to everyone in many unique ways. And so thanks again for giving us an opportunity to share just a little bit of what it is that we do here at Grand Canyon University through the employer engagement side of the Strategic Employer Initiatives Department. We'd enjoy the opportunity to respond to any questions that you might have. If there are other questions in the chat, we can address those first, and then we can also take any live questions that are out there. Uh, what, real quick, Marquise, do you want us to show the video again one more time? If you want to make me a co-host, I can actually try to share it on my screen um, and just play it actually myself. Um, and then if there are any questions, we can answer those first if needed. Okay, let's do that. Let's give you...
Uh, powerful responsibility. And while you figure that out, I just wanted to say thank you again, Marquise and Brianna, for sharing this really, um, really quick pivots. And I love the um, emphasis on getting information. Um, I feel like our keynote at the beginning from Handshake spoke about really connecting with all the different pieces of this. Mm -hmm. And it looks like you did that in a lot of different ways with students and employers. So thank you for sharing. Oh, no, thanks for the opportunity to be here. Yes, thank you, Ariel. Um, so thank you, Marquise, for sharing uh, the screen setting. So um, I'm gonna see if I can actually share this video really quick. If not, um, we I did confirm with Ariel that she will be sending out information to all the participants afterwards, and so we can send this video over too. Sure. All right, so mine shows that my computer audio should be on. So let's see if it'll play for you guys. Can you hear that? Hmm. This is very interesting. So I guess we're still running into that technical issue. Um, I don't wanna be disrespectful of everyone's time about that. Um, so if there are any questions for us today, we will be happy to answer those and then we'll get that video sent out to you guys post panel. It looks like there is a chat question about how we track attendance for virtual career fairs, um, but they didn't know if we track student attendance. So yes, we actually do track both student and employer attendance. With that, um, we, for the employer side, we keep that in our system and then do our own outreach. For the student attendance that we track, we then send the attendance report over to the ACE team, so Merit's team, and they reach out to the students to follow up and ask them their feedback of the fairs as well. It's a great question. I have a question. I noticed that you all are doing very, um, I don't know, industry specific um, virtual fairs. Um, what are you seeing about the attendance with that? Um, and um, I guess probably the video talked a little bit about how you were managing those aspects, but if you wouldn't mind speaking about that a little bit. Our team does a great job of uh, getting in the employers that uh, we want to have involved. Uh, Brianna, um, and Alexa have done a great job of setting a tier. Maybe it'll be 10, 15, or 20 employers we want for that specific fair. And then our ACE team uh, focuses on bringing our student population in. You know, you can never have enough students, and so uh, they work to diligently to bring in more and more. But we try to set it at a, a realm of just 10 to 15 employers so that the engagement is more robust versus having, again, too many employers, and then you're trying to match them with regards to students. But Brianna and Alexa do an awesome job of making sure we meet that goal of whether it's 10, 15, or 20 employers being involved. When did you make the switch to more industry focused? Um, and how was that received by employers and students? We made the switch last year. Um, our executive director, Haley Fogley, um, had the opportunity to hear from a lot of our employers, whether it was from our advisory boards or just through the surveys that we were doing with employers after career fairs. And again, one of the things they were sharing was they weren't seeing enough, if they were an accounting firm, they weren't seeing enough accounting students. If they were a marketing firm, they weren't seeing enough marketing students. They saw hundreds of individuals, but the specific ones they were looking for weren't being seen. Same thing with the students. I'm coming to this job fair that has 250 employers, but I'm not able to get to the ones I want to get to because I'm trying to get to as many people as I can. And so the concept came up of if we made more specific career fairs and invited those students who are the types of students that the employers are looking for, accounting students, marketing students, engineering students, and invited those firms specific, what the students wanted to be able to make uh, contact with, we might have a more richer conversation and that's what's happened. And so uh, whether it's 32 to 42 uh, individual career fairs a semester, we do what we need to do and be able to provide the employers and students chances to interact. Thanks for the question. 
Uh, we also received another question, Marquise, in the chat from Ben. Um, from the employers we surveyed, how many of them are certain of their hiring needs during this time? Um, so like we mentioned on uh, the PowerPoint, we had about 200, looks like here, respond back to us, um, 205, sorry, that said they were interested in virtual career fairs and that they had let us know that 83 of the people, 83% said that they were interested in job posting. So with that being said, that tells us right there that that was 83% were interested in doing hiring right now at that time during COVID, um, regardless of things changing. And as time has gone on, we have seen a shift in some of a decrease, but then sometimes we have seen an increase as well as it's continuing to be evolved. And some of those employers were hiring people to go directly into working from home. And some of those employers were looking to hire people to come into a social distancing format at their facilities. So there was a mixture of what people were looking to do. Did that answer your question, Ben? Well, if it did, great. Um, if there are any other questions, we're happy to still answer them. I know that we have a few more minutes um, to still take those questions. Yeah, this is the end of our official time, but we would like to stay here um, until the end of the hour. Um, so this room is available and people can continue the conversation. So thank you again. Thank you for hosting us, Ariel. Yes, thank you very much, Ariel, for your time today. I think one thing I'd be interested in is, so some of those, um, you know, you said education and fine arts. So you have a lot of fine arts and social sciences students who are, have less of a pipeline, a direct pipeline um, with employers. So how are some of the more niche career fair things working for that population? Um, or are there some ways you've found to really engage them? You know, one of the things that we've done and continue to do is work with our College of Fine Arts and Production. Uh, to have those uh, professors as well as their advisory board give us uh, some of the uh, locations throughout the valley to contact about opportunities because that's not our niche you know we we, we use what they use and so uh, the professors and the advisory board members have been uh, a good tool for us to be able to uh, bring those individuals on campus some of them uh, weren't yet doing any hiring because of COVID but they were giving us a timeline of or when they might be able to do those kinds of things. And then once we do that, or once we set up an opportunity for them to have a virtual career fair, then we work with uh, Merritt Hahn and her team in the ACE centers uh, to get students involved. Thank you. Sounds like a lot of uh, connections with the faculty is a great tool that you guys use. Oh, definitely. They're a prime, prime resource of ours. Without them, we don't have the support of really connecting with students. So we really have to continue to build that partnership. I, I wanted to try one more time um, to try the video. Uh, one of our coworkers messaged me privately and she said that we need to be in the present mode. So I was gonna try that one more time um, to see if that works. So I'm gonna share my screen really quick and get that going and hopefully that actually works. Okay, so. Okay, I'm in present mode, so hopefully it'll sound. If there is no sound, we'll stop it again. <laughs> Can you hear? Nope. Oh, there must be something going on. Um, well, we will still get that sent out to you guys for um, post review as well. And then if any of you guys are on Career Connections, um, you know, or well, on Simplicity and, you know, want to be a part of our network, you can actually see it on your document library within Career Connections. So um, if any of you are connected with us or want to be, um, you don't have to obviously hire our students per se, but we would love to still continue that partnership too. Um, and then you can actually see our resources as well. Nah, go ahead and hire our students. We love it. 
Ariel, I actually had a question for you. Have you guys heard from other colleges and universities how they've navigated during this time as well? Um, I think, well, actually, I think um, I attended one of the sessions. Um, I think Asia um, from GCU had collected some information on that. So I think you guys are going to have a great bank of information on that. Um, but I think, um, I mean, hopefully, um, some of that information can be shared too with we i'm sure we'd love to have it as well so um but i know we've been using virtual career fairs and kind of um i would love to see how you managed it i know we did use um like like google docs as, or forms and such is what we were using for this presentation or for this session um mm -hmm. statewide in general so um i think we use that for career fairs and so just kind of seeing different management tools i think for how to mm -hmm. manage different sessions would be really interesting and really helpful uh to share um because i think that's obviously going to be a trend for next semester so yeah do you guys use simplicity as well uh we're with handshake for yeah handshake okay mm -hmm. Yeah, we just we just found out that they're releasing some new features for virtual career fairs with like video chats now and group chats. So that's going to be a lot better. I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, I look. Aisha like responded to everyone. Um, so yeah, she said she'll share the results with you. So it's great. That sounds lovely. Thank you. The other thing I'd be interested in seeing is like, how do we support students and knowing what to look for at, in the changing, you know, time just with, I think a lot of students, they're searching and they don't find something right away and then they get really worried that there's nothing available. And so um, we, I think um, one of my coworkers just created some short videos on, you know, you want to set the date, um, don't look for anything before March, like that, those things. Um, the landscape has completely changed since then um using words like virtual and remote to look for jobs or just some different little videos about that um so those are being rolled out um i think the first couple were already released last week to our students on our youtube channel um but just i don't know trying to figure out ways to support that job search right now when people are worried that there aren't things available but as you as you have found some employers are definitely still hiring um, but that shifting of like always, but um, just more dramatically right now. So I don't know if you all yeah, have I know that. On that. Yeah, and that's actually what we've been doing a lot of as well. Our ACE side of our, our department, the Academic Center of Excellence, they've been really working with, you know, our marketing team to get that information out to students. So they do short videos as well. They produce the flyers, they promote our fairs and things like that. And they're actually doing spotlights every Friday where they're interviewing you know, not only alumni, but even other people in the university to share just more tips and tricks. Um, and so that's something that we're doing every Friday too, because we're trying to really get that connection going with the students. Okay, neat. Yeah. So I'm glad everyone's on the same page about that social media. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you're not in person. <laughs> it's true. Mm -hmm. All right, well, does anybody else have any questions? I'm kind of a small group at this point. I haven't seen any more come through the chat, so I think we're good. All right. Well, I'll say thank you one more time. I really do appreciate it. And uh, sorry for the beginning technical difficulties. So We apologize for the video technical difficulties. We've done everything everyone told us to do, but it just didn't want to play for whatever reason. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like my headphones, they've been working all morning, and then, this, and then I get on here, and you guys can't hear me. So it's just all those fun things. So all right. Well, it was nice to meet you both. Nice to yeah, meet you. It was Thank great you for the too. opportunity to yeah. present. Thank you. We'll see you guys at the closing session. Okay. Be blessed. Great. Bye. Have a good Thank day. You.